Greetings, everyone. Today we will embark on an exciting learning journey as we unlock the mysteries of Blender in just 30 minutes. This is our complete tutorial to master each tool, the interface, and the essential shortcuts. Ready? Let's go! Before starting our tutorial with the software, we must first have Blender downloaded and properly installed on your computer. In the description of this video, you will find the link that will direct you to the official Blender page. Installing Blender on different platforms involves slightly different processes. Here are basic instructions for Windows. Go to the official Blender website. On the home page, click Download Blender and choose the latest version compatible with your operating system. Installation. After downloading, run the installer. Follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation. Start Blender. After installation, open Blender from the Start menu or desktop icon. For other platforms, the download is done from the Downloads page. There you will find the download for most operating systems. It's worth remembering that the minimum requirements to run Blender may vary slightly depending on the specific version of the software but here are the general requirements for Blender 2.8 and newer versions. Minimum requirements for Blender 2.8 and later versions. Operational system. Windows 7 or higher. Mac OS 10.12 or higher. Linux varies depending on distribution. Hardware. Processor. 64-bit processor with SSE 3 support. RAM. For gigabytes, 8 gigabytes recommended. Video card. OpenGL 3.3 compatible with at least 1 GB of VRAM, recommended for GPU rendering. Disk space, 2 GB of free space. No, for better performance, especially when working with complex scenes or high quality rendering, it is recommended to have more powerful hardware than the minimum requirements. Additionally, support for certain features, such as GPU rendering, may depend on your graphics card and install drivers. Now with Blender properly installed and open on your computer, let's start our tutorial. Blender has a robust interface, but don't worry, let's explore it together. When you open the program, you are faced with different panels and toolbars. In the center, we have the main window, where the magic happens. On the right, we have viewports. There are four standard views, perspective, orthographic, front, and side. Just use the numeric keypad to switch between them. Select and experiment to find the best view for your project. On the left side, we find the toolbar, full of options for modeling, sculpting, texturing, and much more. Explore the tabs and discover the countless possibilities that Blender offers. At the bottom, we have the timeline and the animation editor. This is where you will bring your projects to life. Add keyframes, adjust animation, and watch your creation come to life. On the right, we have the object manager. Here, you can view and organize all the elements of your project. It's like the backstage of your 3D show. In the bottom right corner, we find the Properties and Settings panel. Adjust your project settings, define materials, lighting, and more. At the top, we have the menu bar, where you find options to open, save, export, and access various advanced features of Blender. I can't help but mention shading, which allows you to view your models with different styles. Additionally, Blender offers predefined layouts for different tasks such as modeling, sculpting, and animation. Access them at the top of the screen and optimize your workflow. And ready! This was a quick tour of the Blender interface. The Properties panel in Blender 2.9 is a crucial area for adjusting and customizing various aspects of the objects, materials, scenes, and animations in your 3D project. Let's explore each of the main tabs available in the Properties panel. Render tab, Render Engine, choose between EV, Real Time, and Cycles, Ray Tracing. Samps, Sampling Settings for Rendering. Lighting, Options for Global Illumination, Shadows, and Reflections. Rendering tab, Render Settings, Detailed Specifications for the Final Render. Output tab, File Format, choose the format of the rendered image or animation. Save Location, Destination Path for Rendered Files. Time settings, adjust the time scale, FPS and current frame. Keyframes and dope sheet, manage and adjust keyframes for animations. Scene guide, units, settings related to the scene's measurement units. 
Dimensions, adjustments for the width, height, and resolution of the scene. Ambience, controls for global illumination, HDRIs, and background settings. World Guide, world settings, adjust lighting and global environment for more complex scenes. These tabs provide a comprehensive view of the possibilities in the Blender 3.6 Properties panel. Explore each of them as you work on your projects, and feel free to tweak and experiment to get the results you want. Objects tab. We can rename it, adjust its visibility, among other options. Modifiers tab. Modifier list. Add and adjust modifiers to change the geometry of objects. Modifier order. Configure the order in which modifiers are applied. Physics guide. Simulations. Add fluid dynamics, particles, fabrics, and hair to objects. Collision settings. Adjust how objects interact with each other. Restrictions tab. Transform constraints. Controls to limit or direct the movement of objects. Property constraints. Constraints based on characteristics such as rotation and scale. Date tab. We have all the panels related to vertices. Among the main ones, we have vertex groups, where we can create groups of vertices for both bone influence weights and shape keys, where we can create shape keys for vertex animations. Materials tab. Main properties. Adjust the base color, specularity, among others. Textures. Add and configure textures to create more detailed surfaces. We still have other hidden options that appear when we select the corresponding element in the scene. Camera tab. Camera properties. Configure the projection type, focal length, and other aspects of the camera. View controls. Adjust the start and end of the crop, as well as the camera scale. Light guide. Light settings. Adjust the intensity, color, and type of light. Shadows. Controls for shadows and shadow resolution. Armature guide. Appears when bone armor is selected. We will go into more detail later in this video. Now that we quickly know a little about the Blender interface, let's learn the basic shortcut keys. Knowing Blender's shortcut keys is essential, as this will make your work more productive. However, listing all Blender shortcut keys would be an extensive task, as the software has a wide variety of features and, consequently, a large number of shortcuts. However, I can provide a basic list of common shortcuts for some of the most fundamental operations in Blender. Remember that these shortcuts may vary depending on the Blender version, so it's always a good idea to check the official documentation or the program's internal help. Listing all of Blender's shortcut keys would be an extensive task, as the software has a wide variety of features and, consequently, a large number of shortcuts. However, I can provide a basic list of common shortcuts for some of the most fundamental operations in Blender. Remember that these shortcuts may vary depending on the Blender version, so it's always a good idea to check the official documentation or the program's internal help. General Shortcuts A. Selection slash deselection of all objects in the scene. Shift plus A. Add object. Control plus C. Undo. Control plus Shift plus Z or Control plus Y redo. Control plus C. Copy. Control plus X. Crop. Control plus V. Paste. Del or X. Delete objects. N. Opens the mesh normals menu. Navigation shortcuts. Mouse or scroll middle. Zoom in slash out. Mouse shift plus middle. Pan. Move the view. Alt plus middle mouse. Rotation of the view. Editing shortcuts. Tab. Switch between object mode and edit mode. Control plus tab. Opens the menu to choose between selection modes, vertices, edges, faces. E. Extrusion. F. Fill. Faces. Control plus R. Add a cut loop while editing. Transformation shortcuts. G. Move. R. Rotate. S. Scale. Keep in mind that these are just some basic shortcuts and many others exist for specific functions. Explore. Additional hotkeys. One, front view. Three, left side view. Control plus one, back view. Control plus three, right side view. 
5. Perspective or Spelling 0. Camera Now that we have learned the shortcut keys, we have practically mastered the software, we can start working in Blender to get used to the viewport and memorize the shortcut keys. The work will be most of the time in the viewport. The viewport is the space where we will add everything, all the objects, bones, camera, light, color of the world. We can add native Blender objects or import them. An example of a well-known native Blender object is Suzanne. Adding Suzanne in Blender is quite simple. Suzanne is a monkey mesh that has become an icon in Blender. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to adding Suzanne to your scene. Open Blender. Make sure Blender is open and you have a blank scene or new project. Select Scene. Right-click in the 3D viewport to ensure the scene is selected. Add an object. Press Shift plus A or right-click in the 3D viewport. In the drop-down menu, go to Mesh and choose Monkey at Suzanne. Position and Resize optional. With Suzanne in the scene, you can position and resize her as needed. Use the shortcuts G to move, R to rotate, and S to resize. Hold Control while resizing for more precise control. Complete the addition. Right-click or press Enter to confirm Suzanne's position and size. Now, you must have Suzanne in your scene. This is a quick and easy way to add an object and start working in Blender. Remember that Suzanne is just one of many objects you can add, and from here, you can start modeling, texturing, and animating as needed. Now that we know a little about the basic panels of the Blender interface, we've learned the basic shortcut keys for most of the tasks we do in Blender, and we've learned how to add objects to the scene. I'll be teaching you what I do in my daily routine in Blender. All the tools I usually use, the settings and add-ons I have installed in my Blender that help me work on my anime models. Let's start. Firstly, let's put the scene view in orthography with the 5 key, and then the 1 key to have the front view. Now I'm going to show you the processes that I usually carry out in my work, and that will help you master Blender. To add a reference image for modeling, press Shift plus A to open the Add menu, and choose Image, and then Reference. With the plane selected, press S to scale and adjust the size as needed. Press G to move the plane to a suitable position. Finally, in Blender, the process of importing objects from one file to another is carried out using the append function. This function allows you to bring objects, materials, textures, and other data from one Blender file to another. Here are the steps to do this. In the destination file, go to File, Append. Navigate to the location where the Blender file containing the objects you want to import is stored. Inside the source file, go to the Collection folder and select the collection that contains the objects you want to import. If you prefer, you can select individual objects directly. Press Append. Click the Append button to import the selected objects and collections. Now the selected objects have been added to your current scene. You can find them in the collection you chose in Outliner. Remember that this process not only brings in the objects, but also any materials, textures, or other data associated with those objects. This is an effective way to reuse elements between different projects in Blender. Now some useful tools that I always use. The Snap tool in Blender is a powerful tool that allows you to precisely align, move, or adjust objects in relation to specific points in the scene. It acts like a magnet of sorts, attracting or aligning objects as you move or edit them. Let's explore some of the features of this tool. How to use the Snap tool. In the options bar located at the bottom of the 3D window, you will find a magnet icon Snap. Click the icon to activate the Snap tool. Next to the Snap icon, there is a drop-down menu where you can select different snap modes, such as Vertex, Edge, Face, etc. Adjust snap settings to suit your needs. For example, you can choose to align objects to the grid, other objects, or even specific faces. With the Snap tool enabled and configured, you can move, resize, or rotate objects. Blender will automatically attempt to align these operations with the point specified by the chosen snap mode. During the move operation, you can use shortcuts to adjust the snap behavior. Press Ctrl to temporarily disable snap during an operation. 
press shift to activate fine tune mesh useful for precise adjustments. In the view or overlays panel, depending on the blender version, you will find additional snap related settings. This includes the option to turn on magnetism for smoother adjustments. The snap tool is especially useful when modeling, allowing you to easily align elements in your scene to ensure accuracy and cohesion. Experiment with different modes and adjustments to familiarize yourself with the versatility of this tool in Blender. The proportional editing tool in Blender is a powerful feature that allows you to edit objects proportionally, influencing other points close to the editing area. This tool is especially useful for creating smooth transitions and natural effects during modeling. Let's explore some of the features and how to use it. The proportional editing tool can be activated from the options bar, located in the lower corner of the 3D window. The icon looks like a catchment area cone. It can also be activated by pressing the hotkey O while editing. There are different proportional editing modes, accessible by pressing the Alt and O keys simultaneously. Disable disables proportional editing. Enable activates proportional editing without smoothing effect. Connected only affects points connected to the selected point. Random affects random points on the mesh. After enabling proportional editing, you can adjust the size of the influence area. Use the mouse wheel or press page up and page down. The area of influence is displayed as a circle around the edit point. Proportional editing has different types of falloff that determine how the influence decreases with distance. Smooth softens the influence gradually. Linear maintains a constant influence to the edge of the Now let's get to know the modifiers that I use most in most of my 3D work. The mirror modifier in Blender is a fundamental tool for symmetrical modeling of objects. It allows you to automatically create a mirror on one side of the object in relation to an axis, saving time and making it easier to maintain symmetry during the modeling process. Let's explore the characteristics and usage of the mirror modifier. The mirror modifier can be added through the modifiers panel which can be found in the Modifiers tab in the Properties window. Click the Add Modifier button and choose Mirror from the list. Mirror Modifier Basic Settings Axis Choose the axis along which the object will be mirrored, X, Y, or Z. Mirror Object Choose an empty object as a reference for mirroring. Practical Use When you turn on the Mirror Modifier, Half of the object you model is automatically mirrored to the opposite side. This is particularly useful for creating characters, creatures, or objects that have bilateral symmetry. Symmetrical editing in real time. The mirror modifier allows you to edit one side of the object in real time, reflecting changes on the opposite side. Facilitates the modeling of symmetrical details without the need for constant manual adjustments. Hierarchical Application of Modifiers You can use the Mirror Modifier in conjunction with other modifiers such as Subdivision Surface, Boolean, etc. to create complex models while maintaining symmetry. Additional Tips Clipping When activating the Clipping option in the Mirror Modifier, the vertices in the mirror line will be clipped together, making modeling easier. Stitching Edge Sometimes you need to add a stitching edge to the mirror line to avoid unwanted distortions of the models. Empty Mirror Object Using an empty object as a reference point in the mirror modifier can be useful for having full control over the location and orientation of the mirror axis. The mirror modifier is an effective tool for optimizing the modeling workflow, especially when dealing with symmetrical objects. It offers a flexible, non-destructive way to create complex models while maintaining desired symmetry. The Solidify modifier in Blender is a valuable tool that adds volume to 3D models by creating a solid shell around the surface of an object. This functionality is particularly useful when modeling objects that need to be thick, such as walls, shells, or any shape that needs a true three-dimensional dimension. Let's explore the features and usage of the Solidify modifier. Add the Solidify modifier through the Modifiers panel, which can be found in the Modifiers tab in the Properties window. Click the Add Modifier button and choose Solidify from the list. Thickness 
defines the thickness of the layer added to the object. Offset controls the distance between the original surface and the new surface created by Solidify. Even thickness tries to maintain a uniform thickness, even on curved parts of the object. Material Index Offset modifies the material index of the faces created by Solidify. The Solidify modifier adds volume to the object, creating a three-dimensional mesh based on the existing surface. This is useful for transforming two-dimensional surfaces into three-dimensional objects, such as creating a wall from a flat surface. Allows you to add complex details and three-dimensional features to objects without the need for intensive manual modeling. Useful for creating architectural elements, clothing details, or any object that needs thickness. Solidify can add thickness without significantly distorting the object's original topology while maintaining mesh integrity. This is particularly useful when you want to preserve the smoothness of curves or complex surfaces. The order of modifiers in the modifier stack can affect the final result. Try adjusting the position of the Solidify modifier in relation to other modifiers if necessary. The Solidify modifier is a versatile tool for adding thickness to objects, providing flexibility and efficiency when modeling in Blender. Its ability to create three-dimensional shapes from flat surfaces simplifies the process of creating a variety of 3D objects. The Surface Subdivision Modifier in Blender is a powerful and common tool in 3D modeling. It is used to smooth object surfaces, adding subdivisions to the mesh and, consequently, increasing the number of polygons. This results in smoother, more detailed models. Let's explore the characteristics and use of this modifier. To add the modifier, go to the Modifiers tab in the Properties window. Click the Add Modifier button and choose Subdivision Surface from the list. Subdivision Surface is often used to smooth object surfaces, especially when modeling something with smooth curves. It is effective in creating organic and smooth models, such as characters or design objects. It can be used to add details to the mesh without the need to manually add many polygons. Apply Subdivision Surface after initial modeling to create a more refined and detailed look. To keep certain edges sharp when using subdivision surface, you can adjust the crease property of selected edges. Select the desired edges and press Shift plus E to adjust the crease. Subdivision surface works well in conjunction with other modifiers, such as the mirror modifier and solidify modifier, to create complex models. Controlling the level of subdivision is essential to optimizing performance and ensuring that the model has sufficient detail without being excessively heavy. The Surface Subdivision Modifier is an essential tool for 3D modeling in Blender, providing the ability to efficiently create smooth, detailed surfaces. Experiment with different settings to find the balance between detail and performance as needed for your projects. I know that Blender is a program with a lot of features and that I may be leaving out some tools or modifiers, but here I want to emphasize what I use most in my daily life in case you think there was a missing modifier or tool. That is relevant and important. Leave a comment on this video. Your opinion is very important. It is also important to always take some free time to explore Blender, as we can always find a resource, modifier, or tool that can be useful for modeling. Another feature that I use a lot in Blender is Sculpt Mode. Sculpt Mode in Blender is a powerful and flexible tool that allows 3D artists to sculpt detail, organic models directly into a three-dimensional mesh. Brushes play a crucial role in this process, offering a variety of features to shape, smooth, detail and transform the model's geometry. Let's explore both Sculpting Mode and some of the most common brushes. Sculpt Mode can be activated by selecting it from the Mode Selector located in the upper left corner of the 3D area. Dynamic Topology, when enabled, automatically adjusts the model's topology as you sculpt, allowing you to dynamically add or remove details. Sculpture Mode offers viewing options, such as Wireframe, Mac App, and Solid, to better visualize your work. About the brushes. Draw Brush. Adds or carves material into the mesh. Clay Strips Brush Adds clay volumes and shapes to the model Smooth Brush Smooths areas of the mesh, removing imperfections Crease Brush 
create sharp edges or creases in the model. Inflate slash deflate brush. Inflates or deflates selected areas of the mesh. Grab brush. Allows you to move and adjust specific parts of the model. Mask brush. Applies masks to isolate specific areas for edits. Thumb brush. Adds fine, small details. Scrape brush. Removes material from the model surface. A hint. Symmetry can be enabled to work on both sides of the model simultaneously. Sculpture mode in brushes and blender provide an intuitive and artistic approach to creating 3D models. Try different brushes, adjust your settings, and explore the possibilities to bring your digital creations to life. A useful tip I use is to pin certain useful resources to my favorites. So whenever we want to access the resource, we just press Q, and we will have the resource pinned. To pin the item, locate the item or resource you want to pin, right-click, and the option to add to favorites will appear. To access the pinned resource, press the Q key. Now let's talk a little about Blender's predefined layouts. Blender offers several predefined layouts, which are specific configurations of window and panel arrangements designed to facilitate different workflows. These layouts are useful for optimizing your workspace based on the specific tasks you are performing. Let's explore some of the common predefined layouts in Blender. Standard layout. This is the default layout when you start Blender. It has a general layout that includes the 3D view, outliner, property editor, and other useful panels. Modeling layout. Focused on modeling, this layout highlights the 3D view and the properties editor. Ideal for creating geometry and adjusting objects. Sculpture layout. Optimized for sculpting mode, this layout emphasizes the 3D view and provides quick access to relevant brushes and settings. UV editing layout. This layout is optimized for editing UVs. It includes the UV slash image editor, 3D view, and other panels relevant to UV mapping and texture creation. Texture paint layout. Designed for texture painting, this layout highlights the texture paint editor, 3D view, and other essential tools for working on texture details. Shading layout. Focused on developing materials and shading, this layout highlights the shader editor, 3D view, and other useful panels for adjusting materials and shadows. Animation layout. Designed for animation, this layout includes the timeline, curve editor, dope sheet editor, and other animation-related panels. Rendering layout. This layout highlights rendering settings, 3D view, and other rendering-related panels. Great for final adjustments before rendering a scene. Compositing layout. Focused on the composer, this layout features 3D views, the compositor node, and the material shader editor node for working on compositing and visual effects. Scripting layout. Designed for development and scripting, this layout includes the text editor, console, and other useful tools for Python programming in Blender. How to access layouts. You can access the predefined layouts in the top left corner of the interface, in the area where editing modes, such as modeling, sculpting, animation, are selected. Click the arrow to open a drop-down list of layouts. You can also customize and save your own layouts. Adjust the window arrangement to your preferences and go to File, Defaults, Save Startup File, so that the changes are applied every time you start Blender. Predefined layouts in Blender are an effective way to optimize your workspace for different tasks. Explore these layouts and adapt them to your needs to make your workflow more efficient and convenient. To finish, I will be showing my personal setup and the add-ons I use most in my workflow. Blender has a variety of settings that can be adjusted to customize the user experience, optimize workflow, and meet specific project needs. The settings are organized into several categories and subcategories. Here are some of the notable settings in Blender. General settings. Interface. Themes. Customize the visual appearance of Blender by changing themes. Home screen. Choose which layout will be loaded when starting Blender. Prohibited. Key mapping. Customize or change keyboard shortcuts to suit your preferences. 
mouse settings, configure mouse sensitivity and behavior, save and load. Auto save, configure the auto save frequency and location. Edit settings, MOA edit. Selection thresholds, adjust the selection sensitivity of vertices, edges and faces. Pivot point, set the origin point for transformations cursor, center of mass, etc. Behavior, double click action, enable or disable double click action for selecting and executing actions. Render settings, cycles devices, GPU, enable rendering using the GPU to speed up the rendering process. EV render settings, real time renders, Configure real-time rendering options for the EV engine. Animation settings. Keying sets. Animation settings. Customize which properties are automatically recorded during animation. Time. Frames per second. Set the frame rate for the animation. Add-on settings. Activate add-ons. Add-on management. Activate and deactivate add-ons to extend Blender's functionalities. Add-on settings. System, memory and limits, adjust memory usage settings and other system limits. Debug window, verbose messages, enable verbose messages for debug. These are just some of the many settings available in Blender. When exploring settings, remember that significant changes can affect the performance and behavior of the software. So it is advisable to adjust sparingly and always save important settings. Customizing Blender settings can significantly improve the efficiency of your workflow and provide an experience more tailored to your preferences. Now I'm going to show you the add-ons that I have installed in my Blender and that help me in my daily life. The ones I most often use. Rigify, which is native to Blender. Rigify is an add-on in Blender that significantly facilitates the process of creating rigs, skeletons, for characters. This add-on is especially useful for animators as it provides a quick and efficient solution for creating complex rigs. Retopo Flow Retopo Flow is an add-on for Blender specifically designed to facilitate and speed up the retopology process, which is the act of creating a new mesh topology on top of an existing model. Retopology is commonly used to create more optimized geometry, reduce polygon count, improve animation, and facilitate texture. Retopo Flow offers a variety of tools and features to make this process more efficient. Blender has an active community that develops a wide variety of add-ons, also known as add-ons, to extend the software's functionality. These add-ons can be incredibly useful for specific tasks, optimizing workflows, and offering specialized tools for 3D artists. UV squares, as the name suggests, is used to align the UV mapping so that it is square. Abnormal, I use it to edit the normal faces and hair of anime characters to improve the shadow. How to install add-ons. Download the add-on you want from a trusted source, like Blender Market, Gumroad, or GitHub. In Blender, go to Edit Preferences. Go to the Add-ons tab. Click Install and select the downloaded add-on file. Activate the newly installed add-on by clicking the checkbox next to it. Tip. Always use add-ons from trusted sources to ensure the security and stability of your Blender environment. Our brief dive into the vast ocean of Blender comes to an end. Remember, true mastery comes with practice. Explore, experiment, and dive deeper into each concept covered today. And I hope you found inspiration to continue your Blender learning journey. Subscribe, like, and share if this helped you. Thanks for watching.